Art has always taken inspiration from the real world. But what happens if it's the other way around? What happens when a serial killer bases his work from a comic book? Let's join Keigo, a manga artist, as he ventures into this gray area of morality where he forms an unlikely relationship with the villain. Keigo is a struggling manga artist working on getting his big break. Unfortunately, his interests lie in suspense and horror genres, which doesn't suit him since he hasn't experienced or committed actual murders in reality. So no matter how talented he is in drawing, his characters lack personality and couldn't exist in reality. The Star Maker editor knows this, so his submission got rejected. His boss Hanju Sensei knows this since Keigo can't draw a proper villain, so it's hard for him to go independent. But at least he's got his girlfriend, Natsumi, who fully supports and loves him. But everything changed when a seemingly simple chore led him to a horrific, serendipitous event that would change his fate. Keigo was sent out to draw a mansion and found a candidate. Classical music was loudly playing from inside, but he got to work regardless. The front door opened and closed just as quick. Keigo embarrassingly apologized for sketching their house, but no one replied. The neighbors complained about the loud music, so Keigo has no choice but to enter the house and find the owners. The house is dark and he stepped on something sticky. He made his way towards the music source and was shocked to see the entire household dead. They were all bound to the chairs with a slash across their neck. Keigo collapses and sits on a pool of blood. Something rustles by the window, and it was the murderer. Keigo sits in stunned silence as the killer slowly turns to look at him. Detective Makabe enters the crime scene and observes the family before him. He went out and talked briefly to his boss to let him know that the murder weapon was never found and that Seda will interrogate the only witness, Keigo. Seda appears and both went on their way. Back at the police station, Keigo is being questioned. They asked why he didn't just take a photo of the house instead of drawing it on the spot. Keigo needs it for his creativity. Keigo recalls the time he went in the house and had an anxiety attack. They asked, since Keigo went in the house and he draws excellent, if he can draw the murderer. Keigo lied and says he didn't see the killer. Behind the mirror, Seda was told that they spoke with Hanju and Keigo's story adds up. However, Seda is still very suspicious. Keigo went home and Natsumi was there to meet him. She asks if he's okay, but Keigo went straight to his home studio. He sits contemplating what to do, then he gets to work. Purely from memory, he drew the crime scene and the victims, all the while putting his own spin on the story. He worked all through the night, inking the scene masterfully. The police are having a debriefing on the case. The victim is the Funakoshi family, and they have a lead suspect, Henmi, 50 years old, who killed a family of four when he was 16. Seda and Makabe confronted Henmi, but he ran away but was surrounded anyway. At the interrogation room, Seda got a confession from Henmi into the Funakoshi family murder, but Henmi was so vague and inconsistent with his motives and other details that Seda doubted if it's the truth. However, their deputy superior wanted the case closed and Henmi sent to prison, much to Seda's disappointment. Natsumi tells Keigo that the murderer has been caught and he sees the news. Keigo whispers, it's not him. He goes back into his room and finishes the killer's profile. A family of four is driving along a forest road when they notice a breakdown. Further ahead, a young man is walking, so the father asks if he's okay. He offered to give him a lift, while the mother disagrees, and the young man happily accepts. The young man is enjoying the ride and creepily comments that a family of four looks happy, and four is the best amount, not three or five. Then he notices the kid reading manga and asks if it's the manga 34. The kid says yes, and the man asks if he looks like Dagger, the serial killer in it. The kid agrees, and the man makes stabbing noises much to the mum's rising concern. The man asks to be let down here. 
yet it's the middle of nowhere. The father asks if he's sure, but the mother insisted to go ahead, which annoyed the man. The next scene shows the car fallen along the cliff and stuck to a tree. Seda and Makabe arrives and asks to have a look at the crime scene. The family was bound to their seats and stabbed. Seda begins searching the car roof interior and found the murder weapon. Back in the car, Makabe was impressed on how Seda found it, and he gives Makabe the manga titled 34. The protagonist detective and his classmates, a criminologist and a psychic are all aged 34, hence the title. They all hunt a serial killer called Dagger who kills families of four. Back in HQ, Makabe is browsing through the manga and noticed its similarities with the crime scene. From the car and the manner of killing, Makabe realized that the author is Keigo, the sole witness for the Funakoshi murders a year ago. Seda then shows Makabe that Keigo's first manga was inspired by it. Seda believes that it's the same killer and that Henmi is innocent. They both decide to pay Keigo a visit. Keigo now looks successful and is on track working on his next manga. He then goes to meet up with Natsumi, and they both take a look at baby Cribs, hinting that she may be pregnant. They next visited Keigo's family for lunch, and they talk a bit about his manga success. Keigo suddenly receives a call from his agent Omura. The detectives wanted a word with him. Makabe and Seda is being led by Omura through the flashy condominium where Keigo now lives. It's highly secure, with three intercoms to buzz through. Natsumi welcomed the detectives into their opulent home. They all meet up with Keigo at his studio upstairs. The detectives show him similarities between his work and the actual crime scene. They think it's a copycat killer, and again asks if he knows anyone who could do it. Keigo declined once again. Seda states that in the manga's first chapter, the witness sees the killer. He asks who Dagger was modeled from, and Keigo strongly insisted that he's an original character. The detectives eventually left. Omura is on the phone with the chief editor, and Keigo wanted to stop the manga's publication, but Omura convinced him not to. Omura asks what he's planning to do with the murder weapon, the kitchen knife, but Keigo hasn't planned that yet. Keigo took a break and visited a ramen shop he frequents. After getting a beer, Seda unexpectedly shows up and sits besides Keigo. Seda says it's coincidence when Keigo was suspicious. Seda talked about how he really liked the manga and Keigo simply adoring it for its truth in art. Seda insisted on exchanging numbers. He received a call from his boss and excused himself. A young fan appeared besides Keigo and introduced himself as Murazumi. Keigo is speechless as he recognized his manga's muse. Murazumi affirmed that Dagger is like him, and he understands his feelings, which should also be Keigo's feelings. It has to be a family of four, the symbol of happiness. Murazumi profusely thanked Keigo for drawing such a wonderful manga, and that he already actualized what he has drawn. Murazumi saw the card and tells Keigo he's concerned that they still don't know what to do with the kitchen knife. He had an idea, and he whispers it to Keigo. Murazumi left the place while Seda is still on the phone. Keigo is visibly shaken after the encounter. He asks the bartender if Murazumi is a frequent customer, but he says no and asks to keep the drawing because it's so good. Seda returns to an empty bar stool. Back at his place, Keigo is still racked with anxiety. Natsumi walks in and insists he rest up, but Keigo coldly dismissed her feelings and sent her away. He must continue working no matter what. Makabe rushes to Seda with a revelation about the murder weapon. Before he can explain, Seda interrupts him and says it's the same knife from the Funakoshi murders. Seda shows him the latest 34 manga release, and it's exactly the same happenings. The division chief has no choice but to release Henmi since he's innocent. Murazumi was hiking and found his next targets. The next scene shows the campsite swarming with police and forensics. The family of four rests in their tent. Seda was too late. He calls Omura since he can't get in touch with Keigo, but Omura also doesn't know where he is. Seda checked the ramen bar, but he hasn't been there recently. He noticed the drawing and asks if that's Dagger from the manga, but the owner says it's a sketch of the person with Keigo that day. 
Keigo was being hounded to do more work by Omura, so he excused himself. He visited his wife during her visit at the prenatal clinic and apologized for treating her harshly the other day. Out of nowhere, Murazumi appeared and praised the latest release. He introduced himself to Keigo's wife as the 34's co-creator and advisor to Keigo. Keigo is freaking out, so they leave in a hurry. Keigo confessed to Natsumi that he actually saw the killer that night, and that man is Dagger from his manga. He says he'll stop making 34 and confess to the detective. Seda finally made sense of everything. Keigo says that Dagger's name is Murazumi, and he's modeled after the character. Keigo apologized and promises to redeem himself. The next day, Keigo went to the publisher to stop the manga serialization. But the chief editor doesn't want to, despite Keigo explaining that the killer using the content as inspirations for murder. Apparently, the manga sells really well. The chief tells Keigo to take a break and think of how to end it properly. The police is now gearing up to apprehend Murazumi to regain public confidence. Keigo is lost in thought at a manga shop when Murazumi confronts him. He's mad, since Keigo is stopping 34 serialization. Keigo tells Murazumi that he already told police everything, even his name. Murazumi reasons that Keigo is the same as him. He enjoys killing families of four in his manga. Murazumi advises Keigo that he should at least complete the final murder. Keigo notifies Seda about the incident. His colleague tells him that the name Murazumi has a hit, and he's working as a delivery driver, and his van was at the Funakoshi house. It was drawn in Keigo's sketch. They visit the workplace and got his address from Murazumi's resume. Murazumi goes home disappointed. His room is adored by drawings and photos of all his victims. He releases his rage then for Keigo's stoppage of the 34 manga. Murazumi vows to continue killing regardless. The detectives paid Murazumi's house a visit and his mother answered. She hasn't seen him for close to 10 years. She said that Murazumi had his leg injured from an accident. Seda asked for a photo but it's a different person. Murazumi has found another target and slowly moves in for the kill. After arranging the bodies, he took a break, admired his work, and took photos. He got home and posted his trophies on the wall. Makabe tells Seda that a human's actions will definitely reveal his personality. So Seda had a second look at the case materials. He notices that on the manga, the mountain road has a sign tucked on the left. He did a web search and found that there was a closed community nearby that see a family of four as happiness. Also, there were cases of child abuse within it. Seda asked Keigo why he chose that location. He says that he's interested in the cult-like community that envisions a family of four as the ultimate happiness and the murder cases within it. And he selected the mountain road near it. Seda says that only a person familiar with it could have known where to look for it, since there are countless roads like it. You just can't know it by only reading the manga. He deduced that Murazumi could have been part of this community and was affected when it was dissolved. Seda got a call from Makabe about another family of four murder. He tells him he's on his way and also to look into the family of four community near the mountains. Suddenly, Murazumi spoke out of nowhere, telling Seda, too bad since he progressed so far. Then Henry is in front of him and stabbed him to death. The police force mobilizes to capture Henry. Makabe is at Seda's funeral when he notices Keigo. He tells him that it's not safe to go out. They'll capture Henry first, then investigate Murazumi. Makabe tells Keigo to not blame himself for Seda's death and to continue drawing manga since Seda is a huge fan of Keigo's work. Back at his place, Keigo ditched the digital in place of the traditional way. As tears drop, Keigo started drawing his last chapter. His editors are excited because it will boost their dropping sales. Murazumi is also looking forward to it.
Kago painstakingly worked his heart out, beautifully detailing his magnum opus as his final life's work. He asks Natsumi for her blessing. Meanwhile, Omura excitedly delivers the last chapter manuscript to the studio, and the advertisements now spread across the city. Makabe is trying to convince the chief for resources to help based on the last chapter's direction. The chief was resistant, but relented after Makabe begged. Murazumi greedily consumed the last chapter of 34 and realizes that the last victim is Keigo himself and his family. Murazumi respectfully accepts the twist in the story. Makabe is setting up the stage for the final confrontation but is not sure about using Keigo's family as bait. At the table, he apologizes to everyone and thanks them for their cooperation. Keigo receives a call from Seda's number. It was Murazumi. Murazumi says that Keigo can't be at his parents' house since they're not a happy family of four. His father remarried and he's not related by blood to his mother and sister, so it's not real happiness. To protect the honor of the story, Murazumi will kill the real family of four. This is when Keigo realized and called Natsumi. He asked her if they're a family of four and Natsumi was surprised he found out they're having twins. Upon realizing this, Keigo hurried to Natsumi. Keigo hastily exits the taxi and made sure no one was around. He tries his key but Murazumi stabs his hand. Murazumi then hurts Keigo according to the manga. Natsumi hears the door and heads there only to see Murazumi with a bloodied Keigo. Murazumi enters the studio and revels at the altar of his creation. He sits on Keigo's chair and asks him to turn on the tablet. Keigo whispers to Natsumi to run but Murazumi heard it so he calmly stabbed Natsumi. Murazumi was furious at the effort it required to kill while all Keigo needed to do was draw them. Keigo placates Murazumi by asking him to kill him first based on the last chapter. After all, they both created the story. As Murazumi positions for the kill, Keigo surrenders, but the knife slid off because of the body armor and Keigo retaliated. Keigo fought for all he's worth, pinning Murazumi. Makabe finally reaches the building. Keigo found an opening and drives the knife into Murazumi. Makabe reaches the studio just as Keigo is about to deliver the finishing blow. He begs him not to do it, but the sight of his dying wife and Murazumi's sneer sparks his murderous intent. Makabe shot him instead. Their figures an exact opposite from the drawing. Next scene has the paramedics attending to both of them. Murazumi's trial is about to begin. The judge asks him questions, but he doesn't answer. The police raids his home and finds pictures of Seda and letters from Henmi. Murazumi tells the judge that Henmi was his fan and assistant, indicating that Henmi might also be part of the cultish community. Keigo's happy family of four survived the ordeal and he's on the road to recovery. He reaches for his pen to draw something while Natsumi is out in a shop. Someone appears to be stalking her. Makabe visits a sleeping Keigo and finds a drawing of Seda by the table. As the judge passes the sentence, he asks Murazumi, now not his actual name, who should he be judged as? Murazumi simply asks, who am I? 